you've written your speech, you've practiced, you've even practiced giving credit to credible sources, you borrowed from supporting evidence, but something is okay. When you watch your video rehearsal, you realize that you give credit to the people and organizations you borrowed ideas from, but you don't do it very elegantly. Every verbal citation you use begins with according to and is followed by a long bibliographically accurate citation that causes your listener to pause your speech and see what's now trending on another channel. How can you avoid boring your audience but still giving credit where it's due and avoiding plagiarism. A lot's changed with the advent of the internet, and we have this ability now to quickly locate the owners of ideas. But the bottom line remains the same. Give credit where credit is due. You're using someone else's words, quote them. If you're referencing their ideas, give them credit. Help the audience figure out where your ideas came from. And if you're changing someone else's original words and paraphrasing them to your own, you still need to give credit. The best part about giving credit is you can pick really credible sources for your supporting evidence that'll boost your own credibility by association. So instead of quoting WebMD, try quoting the American Psychological Association, or better, the doctor who wrote the journal article where the study was published. Don't quote a news article from CNN about a study. Find the original owner of the idea, in this case the doctor who published the research study, and quote them. When you're planning how to verbally cite your sources, try writing it out in your outline and transitioning into it and out of it with the supporting evidence. You want to contextualize it and give it meaning and relate it to your own points. So try writing in your own words as you would speak in a conversation. No one says to a friend in a conversation, according to a research article published in 1989 in the American Psychological Association Journal by Dr. Billy Blues titled Long-Term Impact of Social Anxiety on the GPA of Public Student. Fail. Fail. You need to soft sell the supporting evidence. Spoon feed it to your audience, bit by bit, building your point. Let's say you're making the point that social anxiety is a disability that students should receive accommodation for by taking online public speaking. You want to introduce evidence in a way that advances your points. What if you tried this? One in five. One in five is the number of people who have communication apprehension so severe that it could be seen as a disability. And with 20% of students suffering, it's time that students with this type of ability, disability, take public speaking online. Now, here's where I introduce my evidence. It's not a new idea. Dr. Billy Blues, in his study of undergraduate anxiety, found that students with the highest level of social anxiety received lower GPAs than their peers with this severe, or without this severe and debilitating fear of public speaking. Dr. Blues published his research almost 30 years ago in the American Psychological Association Journal, the leading journal in the field. So if we know that social anxiety can be a real disability that negatively impacts students' classroom experience, why not allow public speaking online as a reasonable accommodation for their disability? It makes sense if you read Dr. Blue's articles. He found that students with diagnosable social anxiety raised their GPAs by almost 25% when allowed to take classes online. Notice how I'm weaving back and forth, but always giving credit to Dr. Blues. In case you didn't guess, Dr. Blues isn't real. I made the article up. But next time I'll guide you through a research walkthrough and show you how to find good and real supporting evidence for your topic.